Welcome everybody, my name is Leonardo Barrio Nuevo and today we are going to be talking about Juan D'Arienzo, the mythical Juan D'Arienzo, where he was born, how he created his own style, how his music affected many, many, many dancers and how he became the king of the beat. All right, so before we start with the video, and if you are new to the channel, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell notifications so you know when we are uploading new content, new classes, new topics, so, and you stay updated. So, let's begin with this. Juan D'Arienzo, who was Juan D'Arienzo, where he was born, and how his style affected us, all the dancers. El Rey del Compás. <laughs> So, he was born in 1900 in Balvanera. Balvanera is, if you are in Buenos Aires, is between Once and Congreso. So, and later in 18, 1908, he started playing the violin, violin at the Mascani Conservatory. And that later, four years after that, he started playing at the zoo. He was only 12 years old and he started playing the violin at the zoo with Angel D'Agostino. You know Angel D'Agostino and maybe later in the future we are going to do a video about him as well. So um, that being said, um, they started going around offering themselves as a duet. He was playing the violin and Angel D'Agostino was playing the piano. So they started working around doing different gigs at that, at that time. No te olvides que yo empecé en el año 12 con Angelito de Agostino tocando el violín, Eño Bolorini el cello y Angelito de Agostino el piano. De 12 años, de pantalón corto en el jardín zoológico de Palermo. Later in his career, after he got more confident playing with different orchestras, he started working in many, many of the most iconic cabarets, such as Palais de Glass, Armenonville, Marabou, Chantecler. Chantecler is one of the, his favorite one. He played for a long, long, long time there. So later, in 1925, he started playing for the film industry. He was there for two or three years, playing between the 26 and 27, where he actually started developing his own style, yes? And it wasn't until 1928 where he signed for the label Electra. 1928 and 1929, he did his first recording. <laughs> So in the beginning of the 30s, after doing all those recordings, he got a little more famous and he kept playing in many, many, many famous places, right? And actually he played, as I was mentioning before, at Chantecler. In Chantecler, he played from the 30s until, until it closed, which was in the 60s. So that being said, he started playing with other different musicians, famous musicians, such as Carlos de Sarli, even though he, de Sarli played for him, for D'Arienzo, only for a month, he was covering another piano player. And that was in 1934. But, you know, they were playing together and it, I wish I was there. <laughs> so, but later in 1935, Rodolfo Biaggi joined the orchestra and this was very, 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 very important for him, for the orchestra and for Juan D'Arienzo. Rodolfo Biaggi started modifying, actually he's the one that started giving the change of beat to the music. With him, they develop a different kind of tempo. Yes, they stop playing the four by, by eight that at that moment was more common and they started playing the two by four, the famous two by four that we know today, dos por cuatro. Yes, and um, that was very, very, very much appealing for the dancers. That started bringing dancers to the dance floor. Unfortunately, Rodolfo Biaggi left the orchestra in 1938 to create his own orchestra. Later in the future, again, we are going to do another video for Rodolfo Biaggi. And, um, but before that, in 1937, um, Darienzo played 
for Radio El Mundo. It was a very, very famous ra radio program there. And there, his music exploded all around. Yes, he became extremely famous. Then that was in 1937. After that, he was named the King of Beat because of his music, his beat. The tempo he was using was very happy, was very staccato, was very marked. Ocurre en el verano de 1937. Su debut en Radio El Mundo lo convierte en suceso de Buenos Aires. Su ritmo alegre recupera bailarines para el tango y lo consagra rey del compás desde las noches lejanas del famoso Chantecler. Many of us, most of the people recognize D'Arienzo in the 40s era. Yes, but actually he started in 1937 being who he is, Juan D'Arienzo, the king of beat. Compass, Efecto y Carácter, which means beat, effect, and personality. He always mentioned that tango has to have that in order to be for everybody, for the dancers, for musicians, for all kind of tangueros. And after he started developing that style, most of the other orchestras felt the necessity to follow him, to start playing a little faster, a little more rhythmic. Otherwise, they won't be showcased in the different dances. In his style, you can recognize very, very, very much the piano. So one of the most important pianists of his orchestra was Fulvio Salamanca, very, very famous. So you probably know him. And um, they were playing very staccato, even though some people, they start saying that they started playing accordingly to the era. The era was the time after the war. So people were saying that they were playing almost like a marching. And that was what the Germans were doing, the, ger the march of the Germans. That was what some people were saying at that moment, yes? Because of his style. <laughs> What D'Arienzo did is to bring back some of the songs that other orchestras such as Julio De Caro, Osvaldo Fresedo were not playing anymore. He brought it back, he changed the rhythm, the metric, and they, he started playing with his orchestra. And that was very, very attractive for the dancers, I was saying, as I was saying before. So with all this effect that his music was creating, in the 1940s, in order to buy one of his discs, you will have to buy three different discs from other orchestras, otherwise they will not sell it to you. The same happened for organizers. They wanted to hire Juan D'Arienzo and he was asking to at least hire five different other orchestras, other, otherwise he will not play that night. <laughs> So continuing with 1940, um, some musicians, actually most of the musicians left the band. So what D'Arienzo did was to create a new one. And for that, he asked 
Hector Varela. Hector Varela, probably you know him. Um, he was in charge of bringing all the new musicians, select the musicians, and put together all the new orchestra. And that is the orchestra that, to me and most of the people, was the iconic orchestra, the one that we all love the most. So later was changing, new, music, new musicians came, some musicians left, but that was the orchestra that we all remember and we think it was the best. So his orchestra became very, very popular. And in order to get to the venues, they had to be escorted by police. So that was a funny fact that they, like, you know, today's start, they need security. At that moment, the tango orchestra, such as Darienzo, they needed security and they needed to be escorted to the venues. <laughs> Quisimos juntarnos por puro egoísmo y el mismo egoísmo nos muestra distinto. ¿Para qué fingir? Paciencia. La vida es así y ninguno es culpable. Si es que hay una culpa, por eso la mano que te di en silencio no tembló al partir. Tengo un retrato de aquellos 20 años Cuando eras del barrio, el sol familiar Te quiero verte siempre, linda como entonces Lo que pasó anoche fue un sueño nomás So when he was playing, most of the time at the Chanteclair The orchestra will start playing around 11 p.m. without him So different musicians will play and uh, around 1 he will get up on the stage and the crowd will go crazy for him. So, um, and he will do all what he loves the most, to direct the orchestra, even though he was a musician, but at that moment he was a director and he was such a character and so much, so much fun to watch. So in that way, uh, most of the musicians that were playing that night and different nights, um, they always mentioned that the orchestra didn't sound the same if he wasn't there. If he, if he was not directing, the orchestra didn't sound at all the same. So he brought all the power, all the energy to the musicians and he was marking the beat. Some of them, they said, when if he will come like, you know, accelerated a little bit, they will have to play like super, super fast because he was pushing them to play that way. <laughs> He loved the audience, he loved the audience very, very much. He loved to be funny, he loved to bring the energy to the musicians and also playing with his singers, yes? Today we are not talking much about singers um, because that's another big, big topic. Uh, so we can focus very, very much on him. So he will start playing with his singers. Sometimes, you know, 
moving the tie to the singer just to get him nervous, sometimes playing with his beard, pulling the beard out. So um, he would love to do that, but he loved his orchestra like he will be his father, yes? And he was a very, very, very respectful man. That's what most of the musicians said. And um, everybody respect him very, very, very much. Unfortunately, he left us, he left this world in 1976. He was only 75 years old, and, but his music will be, is remembered today and will be remembered for many, many, many centuries. And he's my favorite. I can't say enough about Juan D'Arienzo. Uh, I love dancing, choreographing to his music, and I'm very passionate about him. His beat, the way he composed the music, and the way when you see him in front of the orchestra, it transports you to a whole new level. Yeah, you see how he was feeling. And I think that's very, very much what tango is about. Feeling, feeling it from here, from your heart. Yeah. So um, that, that is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, if you liked, if you get to all this point after all, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. We are going to be updating and putting new content every week, at least two or three videos every week about dancing, about orchestras, and about different topics, chats. Um, probably the next orchestra will be Osvaldo Pugliese. So stay tuned for that one. Bye and take care.
¿Qué pasa? Se me terminó el ajo, ¿eh? A la bola.